Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread, my name's Crystal and today I have my May um, sewing makes for you um, where I will be going through all the items that I have made in the month of May. Sorry this is coming to you a bit delayed but I will tell you my reasons later on in the vlog. First and foremost, thank you so much to all my uh, subscribers. If you do uh, enjoy the content of this vlog, then please do kindly consider liking and subscribing and please check out my other vlogs on my channel as well. Next, um, I'll just let you know what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the two-in-one maxi dress by Thread Count Patterns and it's version B over here. So it's just like a, um, what are these called? Like a door, dolman sleeve um, bodice. A wrap over it's a faux wrap and then a maxi skirt and I'm wearing it in a Lady McElroy a jersey print just stand back for you so it's a full length oh, all the way so that's what I'm wearing I've just knocked over my mannequin um, and let's go through the items that I have made in the month of May so first and foremost I will go through the non garment that I made and um, what I made is a handbag. So I will just close it for you. Oop. So this is a beautiful, um, pure, genuine leather uh, handbag, which came in a kit from bagsandpieces.co. It's a German website, but their instructions and their website uh, is also available in different languages, including English, Dutch, and French, I believe. Um, and I, this was gifted to me, this kit, um, by my husband, not another brand ambassador or anything. And um, I really, really enjoyed the kit. It was hard work making it up because it is all hand-stitched. I'll just show you. It's all hand-stitched all the way round all hand stitched all the way around um, and it's basically a kit that um, you have everything that you need in it including obviously the leather pieces or the metal hardware um, so that's a bit of glue that just didn't dry very well um, and let me just add something in here and it's got one internal pocket as well there um, you get the choice of having a gold or a silver um, chain handle or you can also choose between having like different fabric handles as well um, and obviously it just comes off it just you just hook it on with the clip so if you wanted to you could buy two different kinds of um, straps and interchange them as you please um, with the kit as well as I say you get everything that you need um, fabric glue you get the brush for that as well this is the edge paint that you get that matches the color of your of your leather so basically i don't know if you can see the edge of this bit here originally when that's been um uh, sewn together that side of the leather would kind of look like this um but then you're provided with edge paint so it kind of um blends in with the color of your leather um you also get a little um filing block uh, you get your needle and your thread. Uh, you get some beeswax to um, put your thread through so it doesn't fray so much. Uh, you get the little screwdriver um, to secure all the hardware up here. And you also get this nifty little thing. I didn't know what it was at the time. I thought it was like, I don't know what it was to be fair. And basically what this is, is you dip the paint on there um, and you basically, it's like a little roller, like a little paint roller and you roll all the way across there um, to finish off the edging of the bag. Um, it's a lovely make. It did take a long time. Uh, and in hindsight, um, I probably won't use it as often as I would like to because I don't have that many occasions to go to. I've recently just been to two family weddings so I used it for one of them actually because I didn't have it made in time for the first wedding. But I think, do you know what, even if you were just wearing like a casual outfit and you put that on or you use wore that with it, I think it would, it would still look quite nice. So maybe I will... Um, try it on with a casual outfit at some point so that's the first made I make I made so I think this kit was about 100 pounds um it was like 100 and sort of 15 euros or something um and that converts to around 100 pounds I can't quite remember how much it was but it's a lovely kit um and the company have also released um they have other sort of bags they have like a bucket bag they have like little purses and things and they've also released a new kind of saddle bag so please do check them out I will link their website below in the description 
the next item I made this is not in order of how I made them of when I made them but I've just got her over here this is my blog post for Jenny Stitches fabrics and it is the by hand London hand address and the pattern is over here so it is I will show you the line drawings it is a it is a, a a real wrap dress so it's a fully wrapped dress not a faux wrap then you have um tulip sleeves bishop sleeves and short sleeves and um it's just lovely length um lovely length skirt below the knee the sizing for this it starts with a uh, a bust of 30 inches and a waist of 25 inches all the way to a 49 inch bust and a 44 inch waist so that's that i um as this is a blog post for jenny stitches fabric i was gifted the uh, pattern the fabric the notions in exchange for an honest review and a blog post so here she is um i chose jenny's pretty in pink viscose which is beautifully uh, soft and drapey it was easy to sew uh, and it was easy to press and i think sort of the colorway and also the print it's just very romantic and very feminine and that sort of and it's a floral and it's in sort of that sort of the things that I, that I like I love florals I love pinks and burgundies that sort of thing and that's why I decided to go for it I also chose some burgundy satin bias binding for the ties uh, in the pattern you are instructed to make rouleau loops I think yeah it's a rouleau loops or rouleau ties um, for the tie all the way around and the tie inside the dress. I decided to use satin bias binding for the ties, which is the same um, thing that I used for um, finishing off all the edges. So it's all bias bound all the way around and it's all bias bound the neckline as well. The instructions only tell you to bias bind the neckline, but I decided to do the whole thing uh, because I had the um, the ribbon anyway. Actually, to be fair, I had to buy more ribbon um, and I just quite like the, um, the finish of that. And also when the skirt sort of blows a little bit, you can sort of see that lovely, that lovely hem, which is a contrast, but it obviously coordinates with the fabric quite nicely. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, so the bishop sleeve, I did hack this a little bit. So with the by hand London, the sleeve that's included, you're asked to uh, make some more rouleau ties to thread through um, to tie the bishop sleeve there. What I decided to do instead is uh, I used the Onella blouse pattern, which is a free pattern from Mood Fabrics um, to um, for the actual sleeve because I quite liked it to be more i love a really really billowy bishop so the this um sleeve head is more fuller the sleeve is actually um wider and also the anella blouse comes with this lovely little cuff so when you wear it you still get the bishop sleeve effect and i quite like that and the beauty about this cuff is that uh, you don't need any zips or closures or buttons so it's the perfect circumference um so that your arm can go through quite easily but also that um it doesn't fall through if that makes sense so it sits beautifully on your wrist and i really really love um really really love that shape of um sleeve and i think i'll use the onella blouse sleeve for most of my blouses and dresses from now on the only other thing that i did hack was instead of doing a tie on the inside of the dress i used um button elastic which is the elastic that you get on children's clothes at the waist so that you can ex you can adjust the sizing as the child grows older you can adjust it and i'll just show you there which i think is an amazing hack i saw this on um sorry this loose thread there on a instagram post i can't remember who it is now but i think it's amazing so basically when i made this dress i'll show you it's not it's not very neat inside unfortunately so i added this um button elastic here and then when i tried it on it was a bit too snug so i had to add a little bit more there um but now that i i wore it um a couple of days ago and actually i don't even need this bit anymore i just go to to this part of the a button elastic and that just kind of goes um is another point for using button elastic in that when you make something if you don't wear it for a while you might have changed in shape or size and so you know if you're a little bit bigger you can just use the you know the furthest away hole and you're if you're a little bit smaller you can use a hole that's closer to this end which i think is a great great um thing to have also if at the beginning of the day it fits you really really nicely but once you've had your lunch and breakfast and dinner then it might not fit you so nicely so then you can again <laughs> adjust the uh, elastic button um as you wish 
So I think that's a really, really nice hack that, again, I will use for the rest of my wrap dresses and tops um, because I've, I've bought a whole reel of this. I just basically got, got it from eBay. It's called Button Elastic. Jenny Stitches actually also has that in her shop, but I didn't realise at the time that I was going to use that hack until I obviously used it and um, the other thing as well is with the ties i actually um so this uh, it's um sorry let me just button here so the tie on the side here is obviously functional it's a functional tie and that's how you open and close the dress but the rest of this waistband here all the way round, it's not functional so it doesn't come off i've actually stitched it down and again it's a really nice hack because I think sometimes when you wear um, wrap dresses, um, this sort of waistband kind of moves up and down. And sometimes you can see the um, where the bodice, where the bodice uh, joins the skirt and then the waistband is slightly higher or slightly below or it's all a bit, you know, all a bit disheveled. Um, and so by the fact that that's sewn down, it doesn't move. So you look kind of well presented and well put together all the time which i think is really really great uh similarly obviously with the front as well normally you would get this moving up or down um, and again where it's kind of sewn down um you don't get that issue did i add any length i'm not sure i might have added maybe an inch to the to the length but apart from that um that's all that's all the hacks that I made. I really, really love this dress. I wore it for my daughter's first Holy Communion last Sunday and I'll pop up some pictures up here. And also some pictures of uh, me at the first Holy Communion of my daughter. And just to say that first Holy Communion dress um, I have also made. If you do follow me on Instagram, my social thread, I have um, made a reel of, of the making of that dress. And I will also be posting photos on Instagram and doing a Friday vlogs on that dress as well. Just to say, for those of you as well that um, follow me often, um, my May my uh, makes videos will be unfortunately a repetition of uh, my Friday sews because obviously the Friday sews is my the summary of what I've done every week or every or every two weeks, and therefore the um, makes vlog is a summary of the whole month, so it is a repetition. Uh, so I hope that's okay. Um, so that's the first make that I did. Um, in terms of the pattern again very easy by hand london i didn't realize is tissue paper <clears throat> which is fine it's just i prefer the paper paper um and i don't know if most of you know already but they no longer do these patterns i believe i think they're changing i'm not sure if they've released their new pattern um envelopes or if they're just sticking to pdf i'm not quite sure but i remember um there was a blog post on their web on their instagram page a while ago saying that they are no longer doing these patterns and they all went on sale so this is kind of like a piece of the by hand london history <clears throat> um so that's that instructions were very very good they had so many layouts as well for this um the booklet i mean look how thick that booklet is for a wrap dress it's actually um quite um comprehensive and also for every option that you do so if you have the short sleeve or the bishop sleeves there's all different there's a layout for every option that you do which is nice so i guess that just helps you in using or making the most of your fabric without um, wasting anything mm, and everything else was straightforward so i really really enjoy that dress i do plan to make another one but as with most sewists as you know you know plans and um actual fruition is um is are two different things aren't they so the next thing that I made um, in the month of May was the By Hand London, not the By Hand London, sorry, the Style Arc Bell dress. And it's this dress here. And it reminds me very much so of a Vogue pattern that I have, which is V9, what is it? V9076. So it's very similar as you can see it's got the waistband uh, that goes up in the center which i think is very flattering it's got the sleeve options it's got the yoke i think the only thing this this pattern has the vogue pattern has is that you've got the tie there and like a mandarin collar kind of thing there but everything else looks very similar so anyway i bought this dress because i really really like the style but i do tend to veer away from the big four patterns only because their instructions aren't comprehensive enough and i find sometimes also their 
their measurements or their finished garment measurements they're just not they're not spot on and then and um, i am a friend of um sarah bailey who is super bales on instagram she is the tilly and the buttons one of the tilly and the buttons models um and i did a collaboration with her on this bell dress and she actually suggested this pattern likewise stylark i've never used stylark before and i thought i would give it a go and i love this this dress here um so i gave it a go um i will put pop up a photo of sarah's version over here and i will link her details below as well um and then i'll show you my version so i decided to go just for the this version here with the sleeve as normal without the elasticated cuff here um, and I really, really like it. So let me show you her. So here's the Stylark bell dress on the mannequin, as if by magic. Um, and what can I say about this dress? So I really, really love the dress. I love how the fitting was spot on, I believe. Um, so in terms of the pattern pieces, I think they're drafted really, really well. Um, in terms of the instructions, not so well. So basically with Stylark, for those who haven't used it, um, I printed out, you can buy um, the paper pattern or the, no, I think you can only buy the PDF patterns. Um, and you have to buy them in size ranges. So for example, for most of their dresses, um, if you buy, say, like a size 10, you will also get the 8 and the 12 emailed to you. Um, likewise, if you buy the size 6, you will get the size 4 and the size 8 emailed to you. But now, recently, they have, um, with some of their dresses, I'm not sure if it's the newer dresses or they've just picked it, they've just picked a couple of that they're doing that are slowly being transitioned over to the new sizing is that they now um, sell them in uh, size bundles. So this one is a size um, 10 to 22. So it's a size 10 to 22, so you get all of all of those sizes. Um, and yes, yeah, so I had it printed out, A0 printing uh, from Jenny Stitches Fabrics, who I am a blogger for. Um, so they do do A A0 printing, which is great. And I got the big A4 or whatever it is, the A0 sheet. And the instructions were literally uh, five pages long. And they were printed at the bottom of the A0, which I've never seen before. So you get the pattern pieces and the instructions are at the bottom. So I just sort of cut them out at the bottom and made a little booklet for myself. And the instructions aren't very comprehensive at all. So this is the first page there with the line drawings and the picture. The second page is their sizing. The third page is their layout. I'm surprised they even provided you that, to be honest. And then the instructions for the whole dress is literally one page and two pages so i think that isn't enough because um not only is have you got all the buttonholes you've got different sort of shaped um waistband here you've got a, a yoke you've got a gathering you've got the sleeves and you also have um, a sheared back this back panel here um, and with regards to the yoke, it does need to be constructed in the burrito method, which this doesn't show you. It just says, I don't know what it says, actually. It just says, yeah, it just says sandwich front bodice between the yokes, flat stitch, blah, blah, blah. So as a beginner, I would not recommend Stylark. I have been sewing for a while now, and even I wouldn't be able to do that without, um, getting a tutorial on the burrito method which I easily did I just looked up so essential on YouTube there's lots of other uh, places that do the same sort of tutorial um, and the burrito method is just so satisfying to make because it doesn't look like it's going to work until it does work and then you think wow that was super super easy um, but it's nice to just get a refresher now and again just by googling like a YouTube as with most things things that you don't know how to do or you've forgotten how to do if you just look on Google the, on YouTube there are so many different tutorials out there um, that's there to either teach you from fresh or to refresh your memory if you've done it before. So there you go. So that's a, a um, burrito method yoke. Um, what did I do? In terms of hacks, I didn't do any hacks at all, actually. Um, and I just thought it fitted really well. For the bust, um, they only have tiny gathers here. But it's such a lovely shape. Like, it fits so well. And you would think that it wouldn't because it's just gathering. But it, it fits beautifully. Um, and yeah, buttonholes were fine. I have added these two buttons here. Now in the pattern, yeah, in the pattern you can see 
there's no buttons up there and it just slightly crosses there but I'm not keen on having my cleavage on show so this button here works quite nicely but I still needed the other button which does, doesn't work as well so maybe next time I'll either try and make get a bigger bodice piece so I can, I've got more an over more of an overlap or maybe just try and put like a a snap or something in there an invisible one but apart from that um I, I really really love the dress i wore this to my brother-in-law's wedding i will pop up a picture of myself in these in this dress sorry oh and also i won so when i posted this dress i tagged lady McElroy, and i um they do for those of you that don't know i think they're stopping this competition now but they do do a monthly um makes make of the month competition and that winner will win three meters of lady McElroy fabric of their choice i wasn't a winner i was a runner-up so i won 25 percent um a 25 percent discount off their fabric which i did buy i bought this fabric here And it's their beautiful Visco Chalet. I don't know. There's so many bases on Lady McElroy, so I'm not sure what it is. But it's a beautiful drapey viscose. And again, it's hydrangeas. But look at the colours of that. And the hydrangea is just absolutely beautiful. I think it's directional. Is it that way? So my plans for that are either another bell dress or what was the latest thing I did? Oh, or an Anthea Allen, um, the dress version, the Anthea Allen, the Anna Allen Anthea blouse, but the dress version. I think that would look really, really pretty. I've got that here, actually. So it's basically, I've just done the blouse recently, that's why I have it on my desk, and it's this version, and I'll just lengthen it. Um, by the way, this pattern is gorgeous. I have made one recently, and I've put a reel up on my Instagram at the moment, and I will be taking some pictures and posting that on Instagram as well. Um, in terms of me talking about this pattern, it will be on my next Friday show, so please do look out for that. Going back to this dress, so the only problems that I had with this dress, actually, apart from the yoke, which I couldn't do by myself, was the sheer ring at the back so the back of this uh, dress is sheared here there's a sheared panel here um, and you use elastic thread for that and I know you're supposed to um, do different settings on your um, different settings on your machine in terms of tension and stitch length to get the right settings for this um, panel here to shear I probably tried a good 10 12 times all different settings all different stitch lengths um and it just was not working um and to be fair i was um doing the test um stitching on scrap fabric not the same fabric it was the one that i made my toile in and it just wasn't working and i thought you know what i'll give it a go on the actual fabric i gave it a go and it actually works so i don't really know what happened there in hindsight um i think the the sheared panel is just a bit of extra work that's not really needed um because well for me anyway i wear this where the panel is at its full stretch anyway so i'm thinking maybe next time I will just use um, that panel, but I will make it um, like a flat sort of panel like this without the bit going up. So just a straight panel at the back. And I think that will look nicer as well as um, being less work. But obviously, if, um, you know, you are used to sort of uh, sort of size changes quite often, then maybe a bit of stretch is good in terms of fitting when you're feeling a bit bigger one day or a bit smaller the other day, then you know that the dress will fit you either way. So that's that i really really enjoyed that and actually now <laughs> despite the lack of instructions for this dress i really really enjoyed doing it i enjoyed the whole process oddly i don't know why but i will do i must make a mental note i am going to rewrite the instructions myself just for my own reference so when i come to doing it again i know exactly what to do um and having said that i will i do want to try more style art patterns because they have a huge sort of inventory of patterns which i've never really tried because i didn't know what they were like now that i have tried i definitely will um uh do another pattern i do quite like the millicent wrap dress at the moment and I'll see if I can pop up a picture. And what I like about it is the sleeve. It's got like sort of like that bell diamondy uh, shaped sleeve, which I really, really want to try. And I will try in a plain fabric like a linen, because then I think you can see that design feature more prominently. Um, so that's that make. The next make that I made was the sage brush top 
Friday Pattern Company Sage Brush Top. So the first um, one, so this pattern is by Friday Pattern Company. Very, very popular on Instagram. And it's just basically an oversized blouse with a ruffle at the front, these big billowy sleeves and a tie at the back. And um, I got this pattern as part of a kit, a present from my daughter, from Little Miss So-and-So. It's part of their All Set to Sew, So Special kits. Again, you know the story, you get the pattern, the notions, the fabric, all that sort of stuff in a kit. Um, and I've made it, let me just move this over here. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna lie her down. Um, so the first one I made is this one and I went for the Atelier Brunette double gauze in the ochre um, I've never bought Atelier Brunette fabric before because it is designer fabric it is expensive um, but I thought um, my daughter got it for my for Mother's Day actually and I chose this fabric so the beauty about the all set to sew kits from Little Miss so-and-so is that you get to choose um, your fabric so with most places, you get to choose your fabric anyway, but for this place, a unique selling point for their kits is that you get to choose different bases as well. So for the Sage Brush Top, for example, you had the choice of the cotton lawns or the double gauzes. And then when you click on the double gauze, you get a choice of all their double gauzes and all their cotton lawns, which is amazing. Um, and I went for this one. And this is the, uh, the ones with the, um, the gold um, sort of embroidered dots all over them. And um, when I was cutting it out, funny story, I thought there was a fault in the fabric because this was on the salvage. Um, and then I looked and then I found another one and then I realized actually that's their logo. That's the Atelier Brunette Bowtie logo. And so I, I cleverly, well, I say cleverly, that's a bit arrogant, isn't it? I thought I would make a feature of that and use it uh, as the center of my front yoke. I really, really love this top. It's a casual blouse, but it's it's just so, it looks so put together and so almost like a dressed up casual and it's really, really nice. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this is the way that they finished the neckline. So it's basically, um, it is it's bias binding and they would have you fold it in so it's showing at the top. I didn't like that look, so I folded it in on itself. But again, where you top stitch it, it still kind of looks like it's on the outside. Um, and that basically forms your tie as well at the back. So with my next version, which I will show you, which again, I made in the month of May, I have uh, changed that totally and I've just used um, uh, facing, is it facings? I've lined basically the front and the back yokes, so it's a different way of finishing things. I will pop up some pictures up here of me wearing it. And yeah, I really like the instructions on this. Um, it was very, very simple. I think it was only a one page, um, one page pattern sheet. Um, and I really, really like it. So I normally tend to go for slightly closer fitting garments, but I'm sort of starting to embrace um, looser fitting items. And this blouse is just lovely. And I don't normally wear blouses. And in terms of my dressmaking journey, I do normally tend to wear or tend to make dresses. Um, and then uh, in recent years, um, I have switched over to making sort of sweatshirts and things for casual wear and skirts, but blouses I've not done yet. So this is my first ever it's a lie sorry it's not my first ever blouse I did make the Onella blouse before a couple of months ago for my so frugal uh, which I didn't pop up I'll pop up a picture of that Onella blouse and the pattern I will link all the details down below as well so that's that one and then I don't think this was in my plans uh, but I liked it so much and I already had the pattern out and I already, you know, like when you're in the zone of making something, you still know the instructions. You probably could do it without looking at the instructions anymore. I quickly uh, did this uh, top straight away. So this is the leftover, obviously, of my uh, Lady McElroy uh, Stylark Bell dress. Um, and I have omitted the bias binding um finish and i have just lined the front piece oh no so the front and the back yoke. no it is the front yoke and the back yoke i've just lined them um i was going to do an enclosed um you could do the burrito method here as well but it was just so tricky to figure out how to do it that i just decided to just do it the normal way by um you know you do the front yoke you just put it the um the lining um right sides together and then turn it out um, and so you're left with um, like a um, a, seat, um, a surged edge at the end. And then with the ties, I just added short ties at the back. And I just think it's a nice and neat to finish. 
I love how the bodice here is just clean um, so you don't have the line of the bias binding everything else is the same and in terms of the elastic I measured the elastic so it was quite loose on my arm because I found with the other one um, it was loose but when I tended to sort of uh, move my arms it got quite tight and I wasn't keen on that but that's my second version I'm really really happy with that and I'll pop up a picture of me wearing it So that's that um, and then uh, what else did I make oh so the other thing that I made um, if you do look for those of you that have watched my um, May plans I did um, what's the word I did alter a couple of bridesmaids dresses which were shop bought um, unfortunately I can't show you them so basically I just had to cut it chiffon material I had to shorten them and I used my overlocker to do the three um, three thread um, narrow hem which is amazing I didn't realize well I knew it could do it but I've never tried it before and it just um, had a beautiful finish that it looks like it was professionally altered the other thing I did was um, amend alter a hoodie that I had made for my godson that was a bit too big so I just adjusted that for him and then the the last thing I did was a um, a newborn set for my um, new baby nephew. I will pop up a picture. Um, and what I used was the Brindle and Twig 43 footy coverall. So I basically just made a baby grow. And this is lovely. This goes from a size preemie all the way to a size two to three, which is amazing. And that is a beautiful sew for those of you that um, want to venture into baby clothes making. Um, it's really, really cute how it all comes together. Um, this part over here is all, um, uh, what is it called, in rib, in a rib knit. And uh, the cuffs are also in a rib knit. And then you can do jersey or French terry or sweatshirting for the main, which is really good. Um, and in terms of this pattern, I have made this pattern before. The only thing that I had an issue with was you're supposed to, when you open the baby grow, the inside is supposed to be um, interfaced. But with um, dressmaking, um, every time I do a button placket, you always interface it. That's just what you normally do. But with this one here, with the front button placket, you're not supposed to interface it. Well, maybe you are actually... Oh, no, maybe you should. It doesn't say in the instructions that you should. But with this bit here, you're supposed to stretch it along this end so it kind of lays flat around the neckline. And I had interfaced it with um, non-stretchy woven interfacing, which is really silly. So as I came to this point, I couldn't stretch it. So what I had to do is I had to peel off the part around the neck and cut it off. And then I was able to stretch it round. So in hindsight, I will either use no interfacing if the rib is thick enough or um, knit interfacing, interfacing, which I've never used before, but I'm sure that would come in handy for that. Apart from that, it was a really, really good make and then you use poppers and it just looks so professional, like a professionally made um, baby set. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. In terms of the hat, it was just a hat uh, pattern off Etsy and the blanket was just self-drafted. So I basically just Googled how big a receiving baby blanket should be and I cut my, my fabric to that measurement and I just... Um, sewed it uh, front uh, right sides together all the way around left the hole turned it inside out and then top stitched it all the way around um, and that's it that's all the things that I've made in the month of May in terms of my May plans the only thing that I wasn't able to do was the um, fringe dress chalk and notch fringe dress which I still would like to do uh, but I just haven't got the time at the moment and unfortunately I haven't put it on my June plans either so hopefully July um, will, will be the time that I have to make the fringe dress um, and that's it thank you so much for watching uh, if you do have any comments or any questions please do comment below in the meantime just to say for those of you that aren't regular uh, viewers um, please do check out my channel I do do uh, Friday Sews vlogs um, every fortnight and if you um, search hashtag Friday Sews on YouTube um, I will come up with a lot along with lots of other different sewists um, lovely sewists um, that have sort of their weekly um, catch-ups so that's a nice way of either discovering new um, sewists or finding your favorite ones 
I also do obviously my uh, plans for the month and my makes for the month um, I also subscribe to the so Haley Jane luxury box uh, and I do the unboxings for that on my channel um, the other thing I subscribe to is the quilting and patchworking kit from little miss so-and-so that's for my 11 year old daughter Sienna and we do that together and I am also a brand ambassador for little miss so-and-so for the um, all set to sew so luxurious kits and I also do the unboxings uh, for them uh, for that so please do check out my channel if that's something that you fancy taking a peek at in the meantime thank you so much for watching bye bye